It has all come down to this. We have the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. This is your Super Bowl 58 prediction and preview video. Hit subscribe if you're new. Also hit the like button. Let's start off with the Kansas City Chiefs because unlike the San Francisco 49ers, they didn't get a first round by. This team had to defeat the Miami Dolphins at home in the fourth coldest game in NFL history and they haven't looked back since then. Throughout the entire season, a lot of people questioned the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. They had the most drops in the NFL. You had the most penalized tackle in Juwan Taylor as well at that tackle position. You had a lot of things going on with this team, injuries included. But their defense was able to keep them in games. And with Patrick Mahomes being the best quarterback in the NFL right now, has been able to keep their head above water. Throughout this entire playoff stint, they have found ways to win games by going out there, playing great defense with Steve Spagnuolo, calling plays, and with Patrick Mahomes making magic. And they've continued to do this without Kadarius Toney on the field. I expect for the same thing to happen in this game. Keep Kadarius Toney off the field. He was upset right before the last game when they went against the Boston Ravens. He said that he wasn't hurt. But you're hurting the team because you can't catch. Go out there, target guys like Rasheed Rice and Travis Kelsey. The biggest thing with the Kansas City Chiefs in this game, you do not want to turn the football over. You want to get out to a fast start. For the last two weeks, the San Francisco 49ers have gotten off to a slow start against the Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions. And they've given up big plays to the running back position as well. The Kansas City Chiefs have done a better job of running the football and using time and possession. I expect for the same thing to happen in this game. Get Isaiah Pacheco going in the run game. He had a very good game against the Miami Dolphins, and he had a very good game against the Buffalo Bills as well. When you go back and look at that Buffalo Bills game, he had 15 carries for 97 rushing yards. That's 6.5 yards to carry, and he had one rushing touchdown. And Clyde Edwards Hilaire had two carries for 31 rushing yards as well. The thing is with the San Francisco 49ers, they do have the third best rushing defense in the NFL for the regular season. But like I mentioned before, things haven't looked the same with the defense early on in games. They make those halftime adjustments. If you can run the football early in this game and use time and possession, you can get some big plays on this 49ers team while using that time and possession as well. And they got to keep Patrick Mahomes upright. Patrick Mahomes has been running around making crazy plays like how he did last week against the Baltimore Ravens and the same with Travis Kelsey as well. But if the tackles can play better in this game against the ferocious front seven of the San Francisco 49ers, you can be in a great situation. Marquez Valdez Scanling had a huge catch last week that iced out the game against the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens called in a zero blitz, and over top, Marquez Valdez Scanling burned them. You can use him in this game, but he's not the most consistent wide receiver. Go out there, use Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey has been the best receiving target on this team ever since. You had Tyreek Hill depart this team a couple of years ago. And Rasheed Rice is a very good wide receiver, but target Travis Kelsey early in this game. Last week, he had 11 catches on 11 targets for 116 receiving yards and one receiving touchdown. And you guess it, the second best wide receiver and the second most targeted guy on the team was Rasheed Rice. Nine targets, eight catches for 46 yards. That's the formula right there. Run the football, work off of play action, and let Patrick Mahomes do his magic. You can be in a great situation, but the offensive line has to come up clutch, stop the penalties, and play clean football. One thing that I have noticed, since they have been targeting guys like Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony has been on the bench, you haven't had those major drops. You have to make every possession count in this game because this is the most critical game that most of these guys are going to ever play in their life. Patrick Mahomes has a Super Bowl experience and the same with Travis Kelsey. Rasheed Rice never been in this situation but last year Isaiah Pacheco was the star of the team besides Patrick Mahomes last year against the Philadelphia Eagles. Run the football, work off play action, as easy as that on the offensive end. Far as the defense, you have had a very good stint right here. The defense has come up in very good situations. They stopped Josh Allen in a very gr great way. They stopped Lamar Jackson as well. They blitzed a lot last week. I would not say go out there and blitz as much against Brock Purdy because Brock Purdy is one of the best quarterbacks against the blitz, just like Patrick Mahomes is also good against the blitz as well. But the one thing about the Kansas City Chiefs defense, they're fast and they're physical. Chris Jones has been phenomenal all postseason long. In the regular season, 10 and a half sacks. But his one unsung hero with this defense as well is George Karlaftis. 10 and a half sacks, one forced fumble, and has been around making plays every single game in the playoffs even back to the first game they played against the Miami Dolphins in the wild card he has been tremendous with this team 
Now, they are missing another star pass rusher with this team that not too many people are talking about. It's Charles Omenihue. Charles Omenihue had seven sacks in the season and two forced fumbles. And he was making some key plays last week against Lamar Jackson. And he was very critical in the game against Josh Allen as well. I trust Steve Spagnuolo to go in there and try to replicate more pressure through scheming up pressure but that's a major piece of the defense that's missing remember his name because he's a guy that can go out there and stop the run and he can put a lot of pressure on the quarterback as well he's one of their most athletic defensive pass rushers with him not being on this field you have to expect for George Karloftis to step up even more and the same with Chris Jones as well as far as the linebackers in this game, you want to put a lot of pressure on Brock Purdy up front with the original front four to four, front five guys and coverage. You have to watch out for Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and George Kittle. Because if you let those guys get behind you and you start to move around with the motion plays, that's when the holes can open up for Christian McCaffrey. People have said this week to week with Brock Purdy. Make him beat you with his arm. He did that last week. Slow down Christian McCaffrey and put pressure on Brock Purdy. Beat both of them at the same time. Steve Spagnuolo has found a very good way to stop the run and also put a lot of pressure on the quarterback at the same time. Look at what he did against Josh Allen and James Cook. James Cook killed them in the first meeting in the regular season. In the playoff game, he didn't get that much think he didn't get that much opportunity to go in space and get things going. You're dealing with a running back that can catch the ball at the backfield and can run in between the tackles and he can catch the edge as well. You have to slow down Christian McCaffrey, but do not treat Brock Purdy like he's a non-factor because he can go out there and he can cause a lot of problems. And I'm looking at the secondary as well. LeJarrius Sneed has been a phenomenal corner. The same with Trent McDuffie as well. And Justin Reed's a good safety. They have to be on their P's and Q's in this game. I expect them to play a lot of man coverage against the San Francisco 49ers. If you go back on Christmas Day and you saw what the Baltimore Ravens did, they ran a lot of press coverage against Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel. You can do the same thing in this game, but do not always just play the slant route or the drag routes with these guys. We go back a couple months ago, the New York Giants had a decent game plan against the San Francisco 49ers. Play Debo Samuel up close and personal. He burned him on a streak route. That can happen in this game, but the cornerbacks with the Kansas City Chiefs are legit because you look at the Chiefs defense. They're second in total defense, fourth in passing defense and 17th in rushing defense the rushing defense has been better in the postseason and their rushing defense when they're fully healthy with those linebackers it's amazing so that rushing defense number is kind of ugly but take that into perspective they were dealing with a lot of injuries at the linebacking spot but the keys of victory with the Kansas City Chiefs use time possession limit the penalties limit the drops and let Patrick Mahomes do his thing target Rasheed Rice and Travis Kelsey early in this game and start off fast. Now let's talk about the San Francisco 49ers. It has been a great year for this team. Brock Purdy has beat all the game manager allegations. This kid has come back in back-to-back weeks against the Green Bay Packers. They were down. He brought them back into that game. The last drive, he was phenomenal. He was 6-7 and looked phenomenal in the last quarter of that game. And the same thing last week against the Detroit Lions. He came out a bit shaky. He threw the interception. They're like they were dead to rights. They were down 24-7. to The next thing you know, they go on an amazing comeback tour in the second half, and they looked phenomenal. The key to victory in this game is pretty simple for the San Francisco 49ers. Run the football with Christian McCaffrey, get Brock Purdy going, and you have to come out with your foot on the gas pedal. It has been too many times the last couple weeks they come out slow, they come out lethargic. Go out there, score fast in this game. You can also use time possession against the Kansas City Chiefs. And I mean no disrespect to guys like Travis Kelsey and Rasheed Rice. I think they're all world. But besides those two options, it's Patrick Mahomes that's masking a lot of problems with this team. The San Francisco 49ers can go out there and they can exploit a lot of these problems. Kyle Shanahan has been to the dance before. The last time he was here, he went against the Kansas City Chiefs, and they lost that game because Jimmy Garoppolo had those interceptions, and they were up by 10 points in that game, entering the fourth quarter. You have to come out, get a big lead, run the football, and take care of the football. Brock Purdy threw his first interception in the postseason last week against the Detroit Lions. If you come out, run the football with Christian McCaffrey, with George Kittle, Get the jet sweeps going with Debo Samuel. Put the ball in his hand as always and get Brandon Ayuk going because he's a more traditional wide receiver. You can be in a very great situation. 
But the thing here is going to be the play calling from Kyle Shanahan. And the same with Andy Reid as well. But Kyle Shanahan can get too cute with the pass plays. It could be a third and one. He'll bluff the run. Then he'll run a play action. Next thing you know, anything can happen. The ball can get batted down the line of scrimmage by a guy like George Carl Afters or by a guy like Chris Jones. And I look at the offensive line with the San Francisco 49ers. Besides Trent Williams, I am afraid of how they're going to look against this pass rush of the Kansas City Chiefs. Brock Purdy showed last week the pass rush doesn't bother him as much against the blitz. He's been phenomenal. Against pressure, he's been phenomenal as well. But eventually, when you're running around like that, mistakes are bound to happen. Keep him upright. Get the ball out quick and target the safeties of the Kansas City Chiefs up the seams with guys like Debo Samuel, Jawan Jennings, and George Kittle as well. Get these guys in one-on-one situations and spaced out opportunities and you, everything can be straight. I have a lot of faith in Brock Purdy in this game and I expect for him to have a massive game in this game because I can see the Kansas City Chiefs going out and saying, you know what? We fear Christian McCaffrey more than we fear Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy can come out and he can give you a lot of problems because he can make any single throw that you want. This is the game for him to step up and show everyone else that continues to become the game manager that they are wrong. Far as the defense for the Kansas for the San Francisco 49ers. They're eighth in total defense in the regular season. They have the 14th passing defense and the third rushing defense. Stop the run game of Isaiah Pacheco. Slow that down. And you have to find a way to bring down Patrick Mahomes. Last year in the Super Bowl, the Philadelphia Eagles could not bring this kid down. Last week, the Baltimore Ravens had a tough time bringing this kid down. And that was supposedly the best defense in the NFL. And even going back against the Buffalo Bills, he had a lot of time in the pocket. You have to find a way to go back there and bring him down. I'm not saying send the house, bum bliss everybody. No, because then you're leaving guys like Travis Kelsey, Rasheed Rice, and Marquez Valdez-Scanling in one-on-one coverage. I'm looking at Chase Young and Nick Bosa in this game. Nick Bosa is a former defensive player of the year. They paid him like a top defensive end, like a top pass rusher. Go out there and bring down Patrick Mahomes. Chase Young, they made that major trade to go get him at the trade deadline, and the defense started to turn up. I need to see him show up in this game. He was essential last week against Jared Goff and crew and that was the biggest thing Steve Wilkes went into halftime he adjusted everything he got everything going into into their favor he is more known to go out there and get things done in the secondary that's why Chavarius Ward has been phenomenal with this team but let's not forget what Chavarius Ward was at a couple years ago he was with the Kansas City Chiefs so knowing Andy Reid he's gonna try to go out there and target him a lot Chavarius Ward has been phenomenal but you do want to go out here and do this You have to find a way to bring this kid down to Patrick Mahomes. The same with Javon Hargrave as well. They went out in fragrancy. They paid him a lot of money. And you also have other defensive linemen on this team as well that can go go get Patrick Mahomes. The same with, with Eric Armstead. A lot of people are saying that Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL right now. They say he's the best to ever do it. It's a lot of it because of the improv improvisational skills that he's able to do behind the line of scrimmage bring him down put pressure on him and press up on those guys press up on a guy like Rasheed Rice and I'm looking at Fred Warner in the run game they say he's the best linebacker in the NFL in my opinion he is but he's going to show it in this game go out there stop the run game from Isaiah Pacheco and pay attention to Travis Kelsey single him out but you have to put him in double coverage whatever you need to do make someone else beat you more consistently than Travis Kelsey especially on second and third down and I look at Dre Greenlaw phenomenal linebacker as well he's a big hitter and the second half last week he was phenomenal you have to be on your P's and Q's from the start of the game to the end of the game you cannot let up on the gas pedal against the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't care about all the problems that they've had in the past. That was in the past. Right now, they look like the world beaters. Go out there, put a lot of pressure on the offensive line, and put a lot of stress on Jawan Taylor as well because he has shown that he can go out there and make some major mistakes with this team. As far as the secondary with the Kansas City Chiefs, like I mentioned before, you want to pay attention to guys like Rasheed Rice, Marquez valdez Scanling. They'll try to pop him in the game, and the same with Travis Kelsey as well. This is going to be a very interesting game because you have Kyle Shanahan once again going against Andy Reid, two of the best offensive coaches in the game today. You have Steve Wilkes as the defensive coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers, and then you also have Steve Spagnuolo, who is a terrific defensive coordinator in his own right with the Kansas City Chiefs. And Steve Wilkes has been terrific as well with this team. This is going to be a great football game. With that being said, a lot of people may say this is the upset. I think the Kansas City Chiefs have been very good throughout this entire stretch, but a lot of it is Patrick Mahomes. He is that great right now. 
But the more complete team is the San Francisco 49ers. They let that Super Bowl slip from them a couple years ago. I don't think they're going to let it slip this time as well. I'm taking the San Francisco 49ers to win this game. I see Brock Purdy winning his first Super Bowl, and I have Christian McCaffrey winning the Super Bowl MVP. I have them win this game 31 to 28. It can go either way. I respect both of these teams. But let me know in the comment section below, who do you have winning this game? The Kansas City Chiefs or the San Francisco 49ers? Guys, it has been great going in and making the prediction and previews from 2023 to 2024. I appreciate all the support. Until next time, I love every single last one of you guys. Thanks for watching my video. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, I want each and every last one of you guys to stay safe. Stay positive. Have a safe Super Bowl Sunday. The post-game recap will be here as soon as possible when the game is over. God bless every single last one of you guys, man. Thanks again for all the support throughout the season. Peace.